This episode of How To Camera is sponsored by Squarespace. I'm Billy Eilish and welcome to How To Camera. Today we're doing product photography with as simple of setup as possible, which means I'm using my phone and, what is this, cardstock? And some Bristol board that I found from the arts and crafts section at our local craft store. Allbirds was nice enough to send us these shoes, so we're gonna be photographing these shoes and making them look quite awesome. There's some good texture, so I wanna accentuate that. And uh, we're gonna see what we can get up to with uh, very simple ingredients. Number one, it's important not to overthink it. It's really hot being Billie Eilish in this sweater. So what I want to do is I want to put this Bristol board down here. I'm using this as essentially a big softbox. So rather than trying to just put a bunch of lamps together to create something, I might as well just use what's good. So I'm going to do that right there. Get a little piece of tape, get something to hold that up. And then maybe also put that down there. So here we have the gaff tape. And you'll, you might notice that I'm actually replacing my Reebok pumps because I, they've been with me since, when do they come out, like 92? I have, these are, I, they might be fake, I don't know. But, I have new shoes now, and they're made of birds. They didn't send me any branding guidelines, so they didn't say that they weren't made out of birds. A little more height, right? And you might be like, this is the most boring photo in the world. But it'll look nice. So as you can see right here, what you can do is you can actually tap on the screen, and you can go up or down. So if you're shooting against a white backdrop, you might notice that it's trying to meter and you, the cameras on your phone is just trying to do whatever it wants to do. So if you touch on pretty much every camera system, I believe, you can just go up and down and you can, uh, you can find your exposure there. And what you're looking for is you want the white here to be a proper pure white. And then you want still detail in here. Um, I'm also kind of shooting in the middle ground. I know that I'm photographing something that has a lot of contrast built in, which is black against the white. All right, and then you just do, do a little bit of dancing to get out of your own light. And I think that looks pretty good. So as a straight out of camera image, I'm happy with that. Um, if you wanna do something that's a little more creative and you want a little bit more leverage over your files, um, on your phone you can actually go into Photoshop Lightroom and you can actually shoot raw photos. And now I'm actually shooting a raw photo, a DNG photo. So I actually have a lot more detail in the dark areas, the shadows, as well as the highlights. So if I wanna play with anything, I have, I got some, some extra stops of light pretty happy with that. And now we haven't even really touched on depth of field at all. Now it's important to stay to what your brand is and if you're a clothing shop or you're doing photos for a restaurant or whatever it might be, the easiest way to do that is to just do something very simple. It's very easy to replicate that across time. If you want to do something that's a little more, a little more dramatic, what you could actually do is you can get an LED light. So I have a few of them actually. So I'm going to bring all these down. So I have more control over my light. This is the Godox, I think it's an R1 on the screen right now if it's not. So it's an LED light that does all three colors, which means it can make any color that you want, or it can go through these weird patterns that are kind of strange, like like this. Police chase scene, and you put that off to the side, it looks like there's the police over there, right? Sting from the police? Ooh, the, sting, sting. The artist. I know, but you can also, the police also do a sting, and then there's also a human named Sting. This is the fireworks, so if you're, if you're ever photographing somebody, like their reaction to fireworks, it's like, So as you can see in our last video, uh, we, we went really above and beyond and created stuff with robotics and lots of people. And we could have just done this and it would have been pretty much as good. But the geysers were awesome. But this is all you need. If you want to do that bicolor lighting, right? And you just play around with where they're at. And the reason I like video lights rather than flashes is that you can just see exactly what you're doing. I feel like everything over time starting now, starting even a couple of years ago, it's gonna move more towards just kind of LED continuous lights. They're a lot less expensive than they used to be. And as you can see, we have a bunch of them around here. And it's just, it's just easier to see exactly what you're doing. Some good colors in here. By going into Lightroom Mobile and shooting this in RAW, I'm gonna have a lot more leverage over the actual colors. You can change the white balance. So if you take a photo and you're like, wow, that's way too blue. You have full control over the kind of base level data. 
And to simplify even more, I'm just going to do one single shoe here. Do you want to do the front? We can do the front. Get these a little bit closer, as you can see here. Very pleased overall with these images. And I can't believe that these shoes are made out of all birds. Can you believe that, Tim? How do they make these? How do they make the rubber out of birds? Let's go photograph some fruit. All right, for our last demonstration of product photography, we're doing kind of a side light. So we're using the light that's coming in from over here, which means everything on this side is gonna be nice and properly exposed, and then the shadows are gonna come in on this side. But when it comes to portraits, as you can see right now, this, this side of my face is very bright, and this is the short side, which is the shadowy side. Everything is just perfectly nicely lit, and there's really nothing exciting going on with lighting. But as we turn this way, it becomes a bit more, a little more cinematic of a shot. It's also a little more flattering, a little more slimming on most faces. I feel like if you're just hitting somebody with a bunch of light from, from the window, that you just kind of see everything. See, see everything. everything. See, see everything. See, see everything. We've harvested this all from our garden here in the Canadian winter. I picked everything out that kind of fit the vibe that I was going for. So I was going for a little bit more of kind of that Renaissance style painting. I'm sure you can imagine and picture that still life, uh, just kind of darker tones. So I didn't pull anything that was like a crazy bright color. I guess I kind of did, maybe. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, this is my first time photographing fruit. I don't know, we'll, we'll figure it out together. I'll trade you spots. What I want to do is I just want to be on the same level as my subject. So I easily could have set this up on a table, but the background that we're using is actually a sandwich board and it's kind of heavy. So we figured set up on the floor. And also this carpet's kind of a nice texture. So what I look for is good textures and we have this good carpet texture, a good wooden background texture, and then the fruit that is kind of soft and supple and lovely and, and luscious. Tim's shaking his head because he doesn't like when I use descriptive words like that. And again, you can touch and you can drag down so you can get a little more depth in your colors there. I am pretty happy with that in camera and I'm probably not gonna have to do a whole lot to that in post. Everything is just shot, normal, automatic, boring mode. So that's all. Product photography, easy, find a window, don't overthink it. If you want, get one of those product tents that you can, just to have that full consistent lighting all the time or if you're in a space that you just can't get access to window lights. There's a photo of one on the screen right now and then you can just put your plate of food in there. You can put your, whatever your eBay items are. Do people still sell things on eBay? I think I bought these on eBay. That's why I doubt their authenticity. Thank you to Squarespace for sponsoring this episode of How To Camera. How To Camera, How To Camera. It's a really aggressive vehicle. Squarespace is a place that you can go to get a website of your dreams. Everything just works all the time and it works across all platforms. It just looks good everywhere. It knows what screen size and it knows how to calibrate all of your items that you've put into your website to make it look as good as it possibly can. There's also a discount code if you click the link. The, the, the text is in front of you, but you, there's a link that you can just click and you can go over to Squarespace's website and you can get your own website and trial for 14 days. If you love it, stick with it. I promise it. there's there's really no reason that you wouldn't love it. It does everything that you could ever need. And then also that I spoke to a couple of weeks ago that it does your scheduling as well. So you can just, if you're a photographer and you run a studio or you run family sessions out in a park somewhere, you can just open up that Sunday and be like, hey. <laughs> you can open up that Sunday and you can give time slots and people can come to your website and they can just book everything and just have it all done there. You get paid and everything is just scheduled for you and you don't need an office assistant anymore. Not that you had one or I've ever had one. I probably needed one. But it is amazing. It is a really fantastic system and I'm very, very happy uh, with my Squarespace website. So that's all for today and uh, see you next time. What's the song? What's that even from? Is that Charlie Chaplin?